Watch if you want to, you can slap Spiegelman's behind. L-W-A-F-L-M-N-O-Y-T on Mutiny Radio. Mutiny. Mutiny! It's pronounced Mutiny. Mutiny! No, it's, it's pronounced Mutiny. Mutiny! Oh, my turn offs are guys who say Mutiny. Mutiny? Well, let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman, oh Mike Spiegelman, Mike Spiegelman, oh Mike Spiegelman, hey, Mike Spiegelman, Mike Spiegelman, Mike Spiegelman, Mike Spiegelman. Hi, we're L W A F L M O I T. Took me a second. That stands for Let's Watch a Full Length Movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Hi, Carl. Hey, Mike, we are not L-W-A-F-L-M-O-I-T. You are. I'm just guesting today. Oh, because this God. is your podcast, film, podcast films you used to read about. It's L-W. Let's watch together on YouTube. Good concept, Mike. Carl produces the show, Thanks researches the movies, <laughs> wrote the song you just heard. I was, I'm a guest writer. I'm a guest producer. Not two seconds into the show, you're saying you're a guest on the show. <laughs> we are broadcasting right now on mutinyradio.fm as we do every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We also have a YouTube channel called LWAFLMOYT. You can check us out. We'll have the movie and the show at the same time. And you can get a podcast by the acronym LWAFLMOYT. Subscribe. Find out what the movie is. We're going to watch a full night movie on YouTube. Oh, man. We want you to watch it with us and listen to our podcast at the same time. Turn the turn the movie off, the mute button off. Yeah, hit yeah, mute. yeah, yeah. Hit mute. So, uh, so you can find the podcast at L W A F L M O I T. We always want you to donate to our radio station here, Mutiny Radio If you go to the website, you'll find a donate button. We are also on Patreon and on Venmo at Mutiny Radio. Carl, it's my first cup of coffee of the day. What movie are we watching this week? Today we will watch Skull Duggery, 1983. That's what you put in the YouTube search engine. Skull Duggery. Of course, skull you know duggery. how to spell skull. It's one word because it is one word. Skull Dug with two G's E R Y. Skull Dug with two G's E R Y. 1983. Skull Buggery. <laughs> no, don't confuse the audience. You can make that joke later. D D Duggery. <laughs> duggery. Like I dig. <laughs> The skull and it's skull duggery, which is the channel we like is Bunny's Bark. Okay, sounds good. So we're looking for the 1983 movie called Skull Duggery. One word, one wonderful word. Go <laughs> ahead, type in Skull Duggery 1983. It is what's it called? Mother's Milk. Uh, Bunny's Bark, which Bunny's is ferocious, bark. by the way. Yeah, Bunny's Bark is the channel we like. I don't know where the, that came from. What did the fox say? Right, I remember, I remember that song. Okay, oh, so yeah, uh, I remember that song. Yeah, the bunny goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ooh, coffee, so good. This is really like the first cup of this morning. Yeah, me too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, whoo. Here we are at, at five in the afternoon for me, live on Mutiny Radio. It's my first cup of coffee. My first cup of coffee. Good morning, world. All right, so we want you to go ahead, find the link for Buddy's Bark is hosting the movie Skullduggery 1983. Once you find it, click the link, hit pause, move the timer to 000. Carl, not only being a guest, he also interviewed a comedian. I he guest interviewed. You guest interviewed a guest guest. And uh, well, let's hear a little bit of this comedian. And at the end, the comedian is going to do our famous celebrity comedian countdown. Carl, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Celebrity Comedian Countdown, this time with Tom Romeo. Welcome, Tom. I appreciate that. Now, Tom, you are new to comedy, such a newbie to comedy. How long have you been doing it? 
Oh, I started in September 2021, so very recent. Now, it used to be that you would come to my open mic at the Reserve Club and you could count the open mics that you have done on one hand. We're past that point now, right? Yeah, I think we're at 36. 30, so you're still counting. You're still counting. Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> because, I don't know, once you lose your virginity, right? You just, you, you know... So what's your number, Carl? What's your number? I, I, I would I would be to... have an open mic. You know the number I'm talking about. You know. Oh, that number? Yeah, I did used to know that number. I did <laughs> used to know that number. When I was in my 20s, I did. I did keep track of that number. Um, okay, so you have a real job, and you've just sort of launching into this comedy. What? As a hobby? Tell me what's getting you into this. Oh, my God. So many things. I'm commuting from home to home. I yeah. have two hours a day. So there's a lot of extra time to do other things. And we just recently got Netflix like a couple of years ago. So I started watching all these comedy specials. And the light came on. Right? I, I saw, um, um, what's his name? John Mulaney. And at the end, it says, written and performed by John Mulaney. You know, um, what's the other one? Yeah, all of them. And then you have your favorites, right? Bill Burr, Anthony Jeslick. And at the end, it says, written and performed. And I'm like, oh, they write this stuff down. It's not like they're just getting up and being funny. And yeah, then, because right. well, I'm a late bloomer, right? And, 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 and it takes me a while to put things together. Every time I get up there, even though I've practiced, I forget something that I was yes. going to like, You just forget. Uh, but, you know, I'm hoping to improve upon that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm having fun with it, though. Like the very first time I did it, I did it with Gina. That was my very first open mic. She did it at the Railroad Cafe. Uh, Johnny Hollywood was there. I think Chris Park was there. Uh -huh. And they told me about the one in Lyndhurst, you know. And then my very second one was with Anthony Quinn at the... Um, in the Clifton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, I think I met you at Dingo's, right? Right. And, you know, and you were very nice and helpful. I mean, you know, you told me about the economy of words, which I didn't understand until I mm -hmm. read about it. And then I understood, right? <laughs> um, and then another guy that was really supremely helpful, even though he may not know it, is Johnny Franklin. Uh-huh. You, know, you know John Franklin, right? I know. Yeah. Uh-huh. But not very, very well. But I know him out there and we're I quite... Mean, he Certainly. He's got a good act. He's a, he's actually a chemist, uh -huh. history teacher. He's a smart guy. But um, he turned me on to this book that I read. And when I read the book, I was like, oh, shit, I'm doing this all wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm just telling stories that I think are funny and people don't get it. And I'm like, you know, and that's on me. But I wasn't actually structuring jokes, you know, with, you know, I mean, there are many ways to structure a joke. But the yes, whole, of course, there's got to be that surprise. Right, without, right, there's got to be a laugh trigger. And I'm just learning now what laugh triggers are. So mm -hmm. I don't know all about it, but I'm, I'm learning, you know? Yes. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And how can people find you on Facebook? So on Facebook, I, you know, I don't know what my actual handle is, right? Okay. There's a picture of this mug at Scotty's. So that's my picture. So just look up Tom Romeo. It's Tom Romeo, I think. I don't know if you know what a great stage name that is, Tom Romeo, you know? Thomas Romeo, you said you get paid more if you're Thomas, you know? Yeah. That's a great stage name. Do you do Instagram? I'm on Instagram as well. I think it's Tom Romeo underscore Taz. Okay, T-A-Z. I, I love the Tasmanian devil. Okay, now, Tom Romeo, everybody at home is poised to watch this movie at the exact same time we do here in the studio. That means they must press play at the exact same time as we do here in the studio. And that's what you're here for. Why don't you go ahead, Tom Romeo, and give us that celebrity comedian countdown. In three, two, one, go. Ooh, that was a terrific celebrity comedian countdown. Carl, as a guest, thank you for all your hard work. Yes. Oh, this sounds like fun music. Well, that's because this is the video copy. In media res. Ooh, a heroin communication. Yeah. Oh, a heroin like a bird? Right. In uh, the 70s, it was much more liberal with heroin. Okay, first we're greeted by a horrible song. Skullduggery! Check it out. <laughs> 
Can you read what's in my mind? Skullduggery. That makes no sense. This must be a Canadian production. We've had six Gordies on the credits. <laughs> it is definitely a Canadian production. It was shot in Toronto, uh, Canada, and they claim that it's Trottersville. I don't know why. The, oh. the, 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 the movie takes place in Trottersville, not Toronto. Wait, keep the, playing this horrible song because I had to endure it four times. This is my fifth time watching yeah. this movie. You need to hear this crappy song. This is like the Mission Impossible theme, right? What's in your head? Oh, it's awful. No, nothing like a good movie with a blue screen and this song. <laughs> so it's like Thursday night, the day is over, I got pressures from work, I'm drifting off to sleep, and in my head it's going, I'm like, oh my God. My God. It's not even an earworm. It's <laughs> why I ought to Richter. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I didn't think of that. Otta you ought to. She, I think it's a she. I really don't know. She directed this, but she also co wrote it and co produced it. Uh, a guy named Peter Whitman, who is a director and producer known for this. Another film called Play Dead and Ellie in 1984. Together, they made this film happen. Now, well, here we are in the 1300s, me medieval England. Not medieval Canada. No, medieval. Med, medieval. Oh, med medieval. People say medieval, and I think they're dumb, but <laughs> it really sounds like mid, doesn't it? Listen, I, I, as a medical doctor, I disagree. <laughs> As a professional medical doctor. Yeah, a professional. I'm a mid-evil doctor. <laughs> evil. I go halfway. Okay, so they are sort of making a poison apple. And they're devil worshippers. It's, you know, Beelzebub, Satan, you know, our familiar mm. devil. And there's it's there's this puppet that somehow is connected to the devil and they're giving thanks to it. Oh, thank you, Gonzo. 14th century Gonzo, we worship you. The Muppet Show was really kind of, it had Punch and Judy back then. I don't know uh -huh. if you know, during the 1400s, uh, during the 1300s, uh, Punch and Judy worked with the Muppets. Well, Judy is obviously the female one. So I guess we're gonna have punch throughout. Does the puppet punch? It's saltive? No, it never, it's inanimate. It's inanimate. It, it influences. Ah, uh, as puppets do. <laughs> yeah. You go to a puppet show and you're like, stop reading my mind. There it is. There's uh -oh. Punch. And they're the giving Green thanks. Goblin. Thanks that we're not in maximum overdrive and you're the truck with the Green Goblin facade. That's a very specific thank you. I don't know that the devil will know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, he will. Well, yeah, because he's connected to your brain, right? He'll. He's immortal. He's eventually going to get to the 20th century. He goes, was... I get you, Mike. He's immortal. Yeah. Yeah. But we're in the 21st century, but okay. Well, I'm saying Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive came out in the 20th century. Okay. Okay. And so did Where... this film, right? Yes. Man, okay, we are now... just come full circle. He's talking to the king and he's calling him Adam. That will be the name of our hero. Okay. So he, Adam's like giving some scroll to some dude and this sorcerer guy comes in and just kills him. And he gets reincarnated? No. And he gives him this choice. You, okay. Apparently the reason that he's the king, see, look, he picks a tarot card and he gets death. Right. He's like, don't tell me. Now, is this your card? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, he gave the king his power with the agreement that he gets his soul. But for some reason, the king betrayed him. And so now they're going to make him pick between two apples. One is poison. One yeah. is good apple. Yeah. Because he's Adam. And there was a Garden of Eden with an apple tree. No, you're right about that, and that'll be throughout the film. Oh. Carl, did you like this movie? 
No. Okay, one of them is a Red Delicious, plus one of them is a Granny Smith. Blah, that's, that's the poison one. Chris, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so she puts him on the tray, and there's two of them, and they're side by side facing him. So he, he goes to pick the one in the front, and then he goes, ha ha! Oh, no. Right, you don't fool me! And he picks the one in the back and dies. Do you think our friend Keith Smith makes a lot of money off of Granny Smith? No, he's there's no relation. No relation, okay. Right. He did himself have a grandmother Smith. That's different. Okay, he's dead. <gasps> okay, well, thank you guys for watching. Let's watch a full-length okay. movie. I need to. Now, what he says is... My headband. Your husband right. agreed to give me his soul. He betrayed me. Therefore, I curse your lineage, all your children... And I take the soul of your firstborn son. But then, like, he kind of kills the mom. So how can she have a son? If is there, she's dead? It doesn't make sense. But there is a lineage, right? We are going to see the next generation. Yes, we are going to meet Adam. And Adam is cursed. Even though he doesn't know it, It'll the curse will start taking effect is it going to start off in modern day Tim modern day Canada? Toronto We're at Tim Hortons. Yeah. yeah, he's at Tim Hortons. I didn't realize I was cursed. Well, he oh, here we go. Realizes. Okay, look, now, you see how it says 1982? Yeah. Okay, this was shot in 1979. That's what we're seeing right now, 1979. And it was released in 83. So 82 kind of doesn't make sense. This is Barbara, and okay. you know her from our last film. That's Mazes the reason why I monsters. picked this movie. The fact that uh, Wendy Carlin, or whatever her name is. Crewson, uh, Crewson. All right, Wendy Crewson. So we just saw Mazes and Monsters last week. And right. that's a pretty famous cult movie, and it was a good movie. But I just flipped my lid that the actress in the movie was also in another Dungeons and Dragons movie at the time. And that's the reason right. why I forced Carl to watch this. Yes. Now, and she's I, saying, it's a funny thing. You know, she's a nurse. The guy asked for a scalpel. And when I get went to get it, it was a dagger, like in our game. Oh, our Dungeons and Dragons game? Yeah. You know, they never say... Dungeons and Dragons. And also, it's sort of like a board game, their version. Look, you see the... Yeah. The, okay, that was Adam and Eve. And it is a painting. And it's going to become a puzzle. And it's sort of like every time Adam kills somebody, another puzzle piece gets added. It's weird. I went to Trottersville last week to go to uh, that store. It's like a weird store, like you don't normally see in a... The store they will be in is a costume shop. Uh, well, we'll see when, as we'll it see. plays out. Mm. Mazes and Monster Wendy had some crazy ass hair. Remember that? It was like bursting yeah. out. Listen, I got to tell you, in Mazes and Monster, she was an actress doing her part. In this film, she's very flat and it's not her. No, it is her fault. You'll see. It's very flat. It's very bad acting. She's acting like an, like the other amateur actors in this film. Which is ridiculous, because last week we were talking about, like, she's yeah. been in everything. She's consistently working. You brought up Santa Claus and all of its sequels. She was yeah, also in Air Force One, Bicentennial Man. She was in Room in 2015. That's a pretty... Oh, wow. Movie. She, she was. She, do you think she was the mom in that movie? Room? Yeah, I think so. I do. And I think that uh, William Macy was the father. Right, 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 right. So here they are. They work at a costume shop. Now, look, you see the guy in the back with the X on Tic -tac -toe, his face? toe yeah. He's like a janitor. He, for some weird reason, he'll be throughout the film. Listen to this stupid braggy lady. Put it on, put it on. 1919, just after World War I. Leave it up, leave it up. There. You look lovely. Very beautiful, Mrs. You know I know. I, do. I know. My boyfriend tells me that. And he's 17 years younger than I am. Ooh, 106. Yeah, you can turn up. <laughs> you hear the Canadian accent. You will sorry, hear that throughout this film. He keeps saying sorry. Now, look, you see the yeah. <clears throat> on the wall? 
Here's their Dungeons and Dragons game. They never call it that. And look how it's a board game. It's Shumanji. <laughs> Are they playing Shumanji, the, the movie, the video game, the board game? Yeah, that's right. Now, one of, he's like, I want to be the warlock. Good choice, Adam. Oh, Adam, <laughs> Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. Okay, he is, the dungeon master is never happy. Nobody playing this game is ever really enjoying himself. This guy keeps on making pig comments, like disgusting man comments, the whole movie. And well, she's the only, again, she's the only woman playing the game, right? Yeah. Last week, she was the only female player. Now, player. Adam goes, do you guys see that red light? And they go, what red light, Adam? <laughs> uh oh There was a game called Dark Tower where it had, like, it was Milton Bradley. Uh -huh. And it, <clears throat> it combined electronics and board games at the time. The Dark Tower itself was, like, this big electronic game machine you had to turn on. Uh -huh. And when you would walk around, it would, like, beep and blur at you. Now, look. He notices the puppet move and fall. He's like, what the fuck? And then That's everyone crazy. Else is like, what are you staring at, Adam? I don't get it. Adam, are you looking at our 800-year-old puppet? Yeah. Huh? It's back up there. What? This happens all the time in 82. I don't know if you're... I, I mean, you, you, look like, you look like one of those fancy uh, summer Trotterville uh, to come down during the summer with your New York Times. I'm I'm here in Trotters all year round. Now look, this is the like, devil. Yeah. Now it's either this weirdo magician or it's somebody called Doctor Evil. Now look, he's got the painting that we saw, but it's a puzzle now, and he's putting in the first piece, which oh. means Adam will get his instructions during the game for them to play the game, but he'll play it out in real life. Uh oh. Now, that looks like a really tough puzzle. Did that guy have, like, game facts open up? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like um, when my kids were super little, you know, seven and younger, you would get those big, I don't know, even younger, get those big, thick, yeah. That's what this guy, <laughs> I mean. The best probably, part about, like, children's jigsaw puzzles is they never leave the house. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I need some space. And you open up something, and there's, like, 600 two-piece jigsaw puzzles. Now, here's dad who owns the costume shop. Wendy is a nurse, but she's also the mom. Huh. Remember, Adam, tomorrow night we supply the costumes for the talent show at the junior college. I left a list on the counter. You can assemble it first thing in the morning. That's going to be a big place of murder. The Trottersville uh, Junior College play. Oh. Uh, show. Uh. We should have never put on that stage production of Henry's portrait of a serial killer. Okay, now he's going to say a catchphrase from the film. It's Latin, and I don't know what it is. It's like Diablos me adubet. Tur turn on the sound. He's going to say it th throughout the film. Diablos me adubet. Yeah, Diablos me adubet. Uh oh, those rabbits aren't taking it. They're giving him the evil eye. Run, rabbit, run. That's an updike. Uh, Trottersville yeah. Junior College 10th Annual Talent Show. God, they've been students for 10 years. Yeah. Oh, love your chicken. Uh, oh, look, Johnny Depp. <laughs> this, is this is before uh, 21 Jump Street. My God, look at this. Yeah, well, he was, he was ahead of time. This looks like the worst talent show I've ever seen. That's now, the Adam greatest. doesn't have a role in the talent show. He's not backstage personnel. Or this is supposed to be funny. <laughs> or anything. I think they're twins. Oh, my God. Look at this talking mime. Now, he's the guy who's a pig man during the game. Oh, look. See, this uh, weirdo magician just shows up. And he's got some spell over Adam. Yeah. Not really, but Adam's just fascinated by him. Now, look, poof, he makes beer appear. Hey! What? Beer. Wow, he made the actors move. And Adam's impressive, impressed. Aw, he's in love. Look at that. That's American beer from 82. You still have to, like, 
use the like thing. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the tab. That, okay, here's the uh, character again, and he's spying on the naked ladies. Carl, is there a running gag where a tic tac toe game is going to be spelled out on his yes, back of his? Yes, every time you see him. So look, the the cop, the the guard chases off the women's Tom dressing room so he can peep. Oh no, there's Santara. Wait a minute. You've seen this film? No, but Zentara is the mu magician superhero of the DC universe. Oh, okay. Because he, he has uh, a name like that. Now, look, she's like, get out of here, creep. And he yeah. flips off her jacket. Her, I don't know. Is that a jacket? Whoa. Whoa. And all the girls laugh. Where's our beer, says the women. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ooh. Ladle. Now we have the worst MC uh, ever. Uh, friends and students of Trump Interesting voice, uh, though, his voice. Uh, My name is uh, uh, Harvey Frank, and uh, it's my pleasure to be your handsome MC for the evening. Ha, 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 ha. I'm the one who will be introducing the acts. Uh, yeah. um, so, without further ado, uh, I'd like to present right now that great master of illusion. So, yeah, anyway, I was on Facebook. Oh, Go ahead. <laughs> And all these other comics were talking shit about, it. but I just want to say here on stage they're wrong. Anyway, let's get back to our show. I like when comics bring up Facebook feuds. Oh yeah, yeah, on stage. All right, here it is, the spotlight. Oh no, this guy. Now put on this annoying music. Boop, boop, boop. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Got a time on egg for eight minutes. Tick, tick, tick. Boop, boop. Beep, boop. Peter and the wolf, look out. This song's now, now in town. He does magic tricks that are like duds. Like you don't see what's the trick. So he's got uh, clothes. Yeah, and he's got, and he's got, a, got a scarf. All right, so it has to disappear, right? I guess, but check it out. We don't really see it. Look. <gasps> oh, there's a rose it again. It didn't disappear. It changed color, maybe? Oh, I would have to rewind, which I'm not going to. Now, he takes off a petal and, like, makes it smear on his hand. Is this really a magic trick? Carl, I got to turn this music off. It's driving me batshit. Boop, boop, boop. Ding, 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 ding. Boop. It's a tie. Like a big, he gets a big round of applause for that. For what? Turn it up for him being a terrible pig. Oh, shut up, Michael. I miss Michael. Hey, hey, hey Barbara, want to see why they call me BJ? <laughs> You're full of hot air, you know that? Yeah. Want to watch me suck a Graham bust through a straw? Uh, Can you believe it? Uh, a pig. Have you seen the magician? The guy is unbelievable. It reminds me of what you said about a movie we watched a couple weeks ago. This doesn't sound like how people talk. Yeah, that's right. It isn't as horrible as that. I think that we're going to can that episode. I was listening to it and I hate it so much Okay, that you can feel through my words, why am I here? I think people will tune out because of my attitude for that. Would film. people go to a Patreon page and put donate money to our show to hear an episode we're canning because the movie was so bad we actually physically hated it? The thing is, they would, but we would be duping them. They would think they're right. getting a it would, premium. It wouldn't be a show. It would be like a downer for them. Whoa. Well, well, that guy's like, ooh, a phallic symbol. Yeah, that was um, Nathan Lane. How many uh, How many times do you get to perform in a talent show, Carl? I forget. Twice in a row? Like, are there other people on this talent show? Yes, there are other people on the talent show, and we will see them, and some of them even die. Well, I mean, it's a tough crowd. There's Paul McCartney is young. Well, we got a lot of celebrities in the wings. Young oh, they're in the wings. Paul McCartney's in the wings. Ah, very good, Michael. <laughs> kids won't get that. There's the uh, devil. Theater kids would. Got that. Hey. Oh. Uh, Every man in this movie not our hero, is a fucking pig. And every woman in this movie is, get lost, creep! The whole mo Actually, that's not true. We just get a lot of that in this film. There's a lot of pig men and resisting women because they're assholes, because the men are jerks. 
you know, it's the seventies movie has that style. It definitely has a more seventies style than eighty early eighties. Okay, now this is uh, a ridiculous, ridiculous play. Carl, I'm so embarrassed that the, the statue, the castle has a boner. <laughs> oh wow, my God! There's more feathered hair than feathers in this. What is it called? A boa, feathered boa. I don't know. A young John Candy in Toronto. This is so great. When you have feathers in your hair, you can dust parts of the wall like you can't reach. Yeah, that's right. You don't even know you're doing it. Yeah. Just go you, in the corner. You say, do you want to go in the pool? No. And that was just to make the feathers wipe the... Okay, never mind. I don't know what's going on, Carl. Why is this guy well, took his mustache it's off? It's like, why will our father deny our love? I'm not really a page. I'm the king uh, the son of the king of like this enemy of her father who's the king i don't know, put it up for a second all right father he will never permit us to marry but we will be together even if it means a death in the family <gasps> my servant piccolo will bring the horses we will ride now, to the castle he calls her piccolo and he doesn't come out for piccolo? his view piccolo? <gasps> now listen to what she does how silly of me. I gave Piccolo the day off. <laughs> so, this, this guy will go, where's Piccolo? Where's Piccolo? And then he'll turn to our hero, Adam, and go, you've got to be Piccolo. Put on this costume. Wait, the, but the bit's over. No, they're in the middle of the play, and Piccolo's... What, what play? It's a talent play. show. It's a uh, talent show. Well, they're it's doing a, a sketch, yeah. It's not a sketch. I didn't laugh once. Carl, this is a ripoff. <laughs> the worst talent show I've been. Listen, I've been to these talent shows for 10 years now, all right? Oh, last I, I, night there was a guy. Um, his name's Alvin Kwai, and he was on all these comedy festivals, uh, Red uh, New York Comedy Festival. And he, then he goes, have you ever heard of Sketchfest? And I was like, in San Francisco? And he goes, yes! <laughs> you know, he was in that too. So thanks to you, I didn't look like you. about that. Oh, yeah. Good deal. Got to meet another jerk from another jerk festival. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm teasing. I love all of the jerk festivals. I played it up like he was asked to be part of. He was invited to. Yeah. Not he paid his entry fee and went to the. He had to go travel cross country for this performance. This insistent performance. So Adam comes out as Piccolo and he goes, now wait. Adam will now have a flashback to the 1300s when his ancestor was killed. Oh, man. Terrible actor. You got to focus on stage. <laughs> so, so this means that the magician, the puppet, somehow the curse from the 1300s, like it's, it's, it's seeping into Adam and he'll start to murder. That's his option? I, uh, I don't know what you mean by option, but that's what's gonna happen. But you don't think the puppet could drive him to make muffins or something? Like you know, I mean, popovers. Nothing works for that. No, the not popovers. You gotta eat them while they're still hot. Oh, what are you talking about? The why, why does he have to go to? Okay. He, why can't he just he he can't make pastries? Uh. The the magician did magic and made the power in the building go out. And clapper. I was like, what it was the a clapper. Fuck is this? How'd you do it? Oh, so right, my now mind. Adam somehow gets to whammy jammy on him, and he is now going to be compelled to commit murder. Why can't he be compelled to make dinner? Now, look, Why? here's a second puzzle piece, but he didn't kill anybody yet. But the pieces are literally falling into place. Yeah, so maybe it's not for every killing he gets a puzzle piece, but it sort of feels that way. There will be 15 killings in this. Oh, dear Lord. I mean, I Bobby Adam. We're not counting the 1300s killing. I have to say the costume store does excellent work. Like this talent show is middling, but the yes. production value is like really like they got real arrows. Good job. They have real arrows, and some of them will be employed. Now, watch this funny gag. He goes to stab the actress. 
Well, it hasn't happened yet, I guess. The funny gag's coming. Now, why is she here in the dark, futzing around with stuff, tying her shoes? It doesn't make any sense, but this is our setting. Some people don't really want to hang out during a show. Like It's like a dark green room. Yeah, this is like a high school or something. Oh, no, it's the junior it's college. It's a college, the junior college. It's Look her 10th annual. Lord. Now watch this joke. She'll go in there and stab. Oh, oh man, what bad timing. Damn it. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Oh, oh. let the mark. Oh. I hate when that happens. Stage manager is going to kill me. The janitor is going to kill me. In French, it's pronounced stage. Okay, now here comes another, like, is it a joke or something? He goes, to, suddenly he's got a bow and arrow out of right. nowhere. He goes to shoot it, and it was a mirror! Damn it! Oh. Damn it! And she doesn't even notice or hear the mirror sh shatter. She didn't hear an arrow go through a mirror and break right. it? Right. Hey, all right. By the way, look, as I was saying before. Yeah, turn him up. He's going to do pig man stuff now. Before the creation of Adam and Eve in the Ooh, Garden of Eden. Yeah. It is my immense pleasure to present Gina Carolini, the exchange student from Palermo. Palermo. Uh, listen, listen. The wonder of Italy. How one country can turn out such tiny little cars. And such enormous women. <laughs> that's, all, that's all. I just wanted you to hear his pig man joke because that's throughout the whole film of disgusting debauch. Oh, it's disgusting. Joke. I've been writing it down. Yeah, well. Yeah. Hey, there hey. is Poe Bridges as a young man. Oh, it's a uh, yeah. Is he Italian like she is? Yeah, that's an exchange student. Now we're going to get a leaning tower of Pisa joke coming up. Uh, you can't have so, a phallic symbol in this movie. Why would they have the prop not already on stage for her? I don't know. And it's also upright. Right. There we right. go. That's the oh, joke. There we is. go. That must be the joke. Yeah, it is. They all laugh. Oh. So that isn't yeah. a very revealing costume, but she's out of the film. Oh, there's young Christopher Walken. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's very sexy. You know, it reminds me of the time I went out to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and there was a woman with a tambourine outside. <laughs> now, I don't know what this scene is for. He's staring at a fish tank, which he's right, making change tanks. color. You see how stuff disappeared in it? Yeah. Every time he changes the light, like the fish disappear... Something this goes in there. Goes in. What is this all about? This is this movie is telling me to think about stuff, and I don't want to. I don't yeah. want it, Carl. You got don't not, gonna, not gonna teach me shit, movie. <laughs> I just came to watch a bunch of people get killed at a talent show. Am I wrong? Wait, we haven't seen one killed yet. Remember, Adam was up. Oh, he's got uh, another X. That's that's an awful joke. I know, and. Like we saw him in the costume shop a moment ago when it di it didn't make sense he was there. We're gonna see him later in other places that don't make sense. I guess they think this is hilarious. I think they just think about this stuff too much. You know, you didn't need. You could have the guy walking around with a uh, t-shirt. Uh, I don't know. Well, at least a continuity uh, person had something to do during this movie. Yeah, that's right. Give him another X. It's time for an O. Now turn it up, turn it up the sound. Okay, that's I am leaving. You can hear that like she goes, somebody put oil on my back, so he does. And then she goes, get out of here, you lecherous cretin. See, this is why we need a pornography filled internet. Okay. It keeps men from being pigs. <laughs> You know what and I mean? What, yeah, so they don't behave this way, and then the people don't, pay, guys don't pay to see this movie. Do you remember when we were kids? There was uh -huh. no source of pornography. You had yeah. to go find it on your own. So you therefore, was, yeah. you were all the time looking for real world, a peep of some girl's thigh, you know? But since the internet. Uh oh. Now, why another do we have another puzzle piece? I don't know who this guy is. He like a, he looks like a De Niro knockoff from Angel Heart. 
It's either Dr. Evil or the devil, and he <gasps> represents... Look, Keith Smith's grandma represents. Yeah, that's right. Granny Smith. That's the poison apple, as you recall. I don't recall. That was like 20 minutes ago, Carl. Okay, now it's time for our very first death. <gasps> On stage? Yeah, and the thing is, somehow Adam is responsible for it, even though, look, she he's, he's flashing back to the apple that killed his ancestor. His dis <sighs> yeah, his ancestor. What kind of talent is this? Is she going to juggle the apples? I don't get like the production. They're doing a play about the eating the apple with the snake in the Garden of Eden. Oh, oh, the snake from the magician's suitcase. Yes, I guess. Oh, I don't like acting anymore. This sucks. Yeah. I'm out of here. Oh, there's a snake. There's the snake. Oh, Adam's using psychic snake powers. I I don't know, because he's really observing. He isn't really doing it. Pretty she will fierce. be, like, she won't be choked to death, which is the obvious thing you do with a boa constrictor. Instead, right. she'll have a heart attack and die on stage. And the internet counts this in our body count as Adam's killing, Adam's first killing. If the snake was called Adam. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's the snake who killed him. You don't have to be Poirot to know that. Poirot. Oh, a little flashback. We'll be back. I want you to turn it up to hear how bad Wendy's acting is. Before my very eyes, I'm a nurse and there was nothing I could do about it. I saw it quite differently. Oh my God. There was that big snake. Huh. Hi, we're Mr. and Mrs. Bull. Can you show us where we can find some bunny costumes, please? <laughs> uh... Yes, there's some in the row just over there. I'm not well, sure. Right now, she's not doing bad acting. She's just kind of oh, talking to them. But when she expresses her emotions, it's horrible acting. Now, this woman is a real actress. Um, she was she had this breakthrough role in 91 in a film called The Doctor. And that's really what launched her public eye career. Then she was in The Good Son in 93. And that was it. She hit the Santa Claus in 94 and did all the sequels. And she got booked in a million films after that. Yeah. Well, she was great in The Good Son. But, yeah, not much afterwards. It's so funny. These two guys show the, the couple shows up wearing custom T-shirts. And they're like, yeah. we are looking for costumes for our costumes that we were wearing. <laughs> no, that it said Trottersville Bowling League. Yeah, bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> the director's being cute. It's Toronto, as you know. Uh, let's see. What was the joke? Otta Richter? Otta. I Otta. Go ahead. Listen, Otta. listen. All right. Oh, yeah. By the way, she's got this itch in Act 1. I have an idea. And it never pays off. Okay, listen to her idea. She He, he doesn't want to go to a shrink. No, really, I do. And I've been to her before, so I know she's good. It's a psychic. What do you say? Worth 20 bucks to you? 20 bucks? I don't know. Yeah, in 1979 money. Well, how do we know? Very realistic. You should go to Hollywood. The walk will do you good. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I don't know if the audience got a sense of it, but this um, Wendy Crewson, who's a great actress, uh, is a horrible actress. <laughs> Carl, I gotta get, I gotta get another cup. I'm serious. I do too, actually. Should we do that to the audience? No, you go first. Okay. My idea that the puzzle was about one piece per killing is obviously wrong because only one person has died and the devil is well into making his puzzle. So I think it's putting together the psyche of Adam to become a killer. So she says, you should go to a shrink. And he goes, I don't believe in shrinks. So she goes, then you should go to a psychic for some reason. And that's why Adam is here. He is entering to get counseled by the psychic. So he can try to get his shit together. 
And you might be like, why isn't his shit together? He keeps seeing things. Puppets talk to the him. He's compelled to say the catchphrase, Diablos ma adubet. Okay, so here he is with like uh, Madame Perot. Oh, here comes Michael back, waiting for headphones. Okay. Hi. Hey, Mike. So look, he doesn't want to go to a shrink because they're quacks. So Wendy directs him to a psychic. Right, so he's not like, a quack. You're right. So he goes, she goes, pay me first. So he's got to pay the 20 bucks. And then she goes, give me your driver's license. I don't know why. Oh, that's great. Well, there'd be a lot of drinking involved. And he, yeah, he, it would be, be irresponsible for the fortune teller to let him go home and drive home drunk. Now, maybe she's writing down his date of birth or something. I don't know. Then she I, starts I, to predict your father's, I, um, she starts to amaze him with knowing stuff she shouldn't know. Your father's name was Jeremy. You lost your sight at four years old after falling off a swing for four days. You have wow. a wart on your left armpit. And he's like, how do you know this? Well, after looking at your driver's license, I, I feel that you're five, seven, and that you were born in September. Yeah. That's true. So she's doing it right now. She's rattling off these things that she shouldn't know to prove that she's for real. Then we're going to the tarot cards. And she's going to pick oh, no. cards. Yeah. Is death going to be in the one of the cards? Yes. She's going to start freaking out like your soul is so confused. Only the devil could sort it out. Really? Yeah. Listen, I don't want a life story. I just want to go to a fortune teller. I have I have pheromones that I, I need to stimulate. So I go to a uh, fortune teller. She tells me a bunch of hooey. And I go, whoa, endorphin rush. Secret. Okay, here come the cards. All right. Now, Carl, as she starts doing the cards, she's like, oh, well, that's not good. This you know, I look at the next one. Hmm, that's Kind of worse, especially when you put them together. Then she gets to the <laughs> card. And as she gets to the end, it's death card. And she's like, right. oh. oh, but if I pair it death with another card, it should be better. Here, I'll flip the card. Oh, no, it's super, super death. Oh. Oh. Look, watch your face. She goes, no, Yeesh. no. Then she gets to the final card and she doesn't want to turn it around and look. <sighs> I went to a fortune teller, right? And we sat down and put that. She started putting cards down in like seven columns and moving them around. I go, are you reading my fortune? She goes, no, I'm playing solitaire. I'm a temp. <laughs> I still got six more hours of work. I got a full house and three people died. <laughs> That's not my joke. That's Stephen Wright joke. I played poker with tarot cards. Uh, I got I a full it. house and three people died. Now, look, she puts down death. <gasps> now, finally, you see that, like, letter opener or something on Yeah. The, yeah. Do you think Adam's going to have any emotion in this movie? Now, no, I do not. Now, watch what Adam will do with the letter opener. Oh, he's going to finally kill someone? Yes. Ah! Oh. With that little stab, she's 100% dead. Doesn't make sense. Oh, no, those are dangerous things, letter openers. Sure. Okay, so that's body count up to two. Two, right, because it was death by snake on stage. On stage death, that's the way to go. Which shouldn't count, but the internet counts it. Now, look, he's doing home alone thing. The guy's like, freeze, don't move, and then it'll be the TV. Now turn Ridiculous. around slowly. Ridiculous. What kind of profession do you have where you have the TV on? Right. And it wasn't on before. Right. Well, she had, she wanted to watch her stories. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think this take this now, deck of cards. I think that Adam really misses an opportunity here because if it was me, I would have taken my twenty dollars back. Oh, and, and the orb, the crystal ball. Look, Steve Martin joke. Oh my god, Donald Trump does not find it funny. Okay, I'm going to now take my turn to pour a cup of coffee, and you turn Please. up the sound a little bit. Now, one thing that's super interesting is nobody's enjoying themselves playing this game. No, even the, especially the dungeon master. He doesn't like it at all. 
He's the dungeon master, the guy who's like 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And 40 is yeah, old. Go. Welcome, nerds, to the Nerdathon. Oh, are they going to record this for a podcast? Hi, we're a bunch of comedians playing Dungeons and Dragons. I am a healer. Yeah, it looks like a great game. Hear a little bit. Or a nurse. Ooh, this. Maybe her. I don't know about Carl. I still have the arrow through the head. Uh, I should put that on my headphones and walk around. I'll be like the coolest guy in the world. I didn't mention this in last week's show during Mazes and Monsters, but I was vice president of my high school's strategy club, which was basically Dungeons and Dragons. Very proud of that fact. Don't do it. Roll a die. Uh, this movie is so boring. They have to play games in the middle of it. The guy's writing on notepads. Just roll the fucking. Does that die? <laughs> what the hell did he just roll? It was like a pebble. Oh, I rolled a two on the pebble. Eva Lance. Oh, right. She's a nurse. I remember that. This must be a Canadian hospital. Oh. Got some parking meter quarters. I could stalk her for hours. Just got to feed the meter first. 15 minutes for a quarter. What a ripoff. Okay, now what happened here was they were playing the game and he said, there is the, you know, like a party led by the devil and they want you to kill the woman in the white gown. And so oh. Adam is seeing a nurse in a white gown so he thinks to himself this I, is who i have to kill he did a good job on that fortune teller there's like no follow-up right uh no he'll never get busted now we will hear a radio account of them saying the woman died on stage of a heart attack and then this tarot card reader was stabbed and they're making a connection between the two it doesn't which is make so sense. bizarre Honestly, a freak death on stage and then a homicide at a fortune teller. I don't and know. Those two are connected. It's it's dumb. If this was murder, Bring it up. Wrote, Turn up the sound. All right, all right. What are they doing, Carl? Wow. Doggy style. In this room at this time. Oof. Shouldn't say that. Order be gone. You're the best. You're the best in this room at this time. Oh, yeah, here it is. Ooh, look at all that saws. This must be a medical hospital. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they have a ball peen hammer and a wrench on the wall? Why would you have a fucking saw? Like, if I was in the, I had surgery, and if I had a saw on the wall, I would be fucking sawing people coming in. Now, this right. is weird. It turns out that the guy she was with is like in a monkey suit for oh. no good reason. Now but She knows that, right? Yeah, I guess. Now, wow. when she leaves the room, all of a sudden she's freaked out as if somebody's following her. It make, Watch. It makes no sense to our plot. Like, at it's first, I walk, thought walk was of like, shame. Walk well, that's what I thought. At first, she was like, she didn't want to get caught, that she was just doing it with a monkey. Banging a gorilla, yeah. But that's not what happens. She, later, she'll go, doctor, somebody's following me. Didn't we watch Stitches where there was a scene where someone's in a gorilla suit? And yes. Yeah. All right. Stitches was horrible, horrible film. Not a good movie. The thing is, it, it did all tropes that have been done before. They were like... Let's do like they weren't copying Animal House, they were copying like Animal House copiers. Yeah, oh no, no, it's a carbon copy to the point where it just fades. She's super paranoid, yeah, and there's no explanation as to why in the film. Also, she just came out of a room with the saws and now she has a tray of like pills, yeah, medicine or something. Jello shots. Oh, hello, nurse. Now, here's Wendy as a nurse. Her father is the owner of the costume shop, and she's in the costume shop working sometimes. It kind of doesn't make sense why she has two jobs. Also, can I say something about the costume shop? Because it really is. Like, I have a bone to grind. Okay. Axe to grind. The oh, couple okay. came in. 
And they said, we're looking for bunny costumes. And they said, oh, it's in the third rack. They disappear. They take the costume, put on the costume, walk up there. I, I've never been to a costume shop where they allow you to fucking put yeah, on get the your own costume, change yeah. in the public in the public showroom. Right. Wah! Oh, uh, doctor. No, it's not a doctor. It's Adam in COVID times. Right. I was going to say, like, that's a great costume. What costume? It's COVID time. Jesus Christ, back in 82, they're huge. Stab! Oh, it's the death. Right, it's instant death. She was stabbed with a syringe in her temple, and here's our third body in our body count. Now, I'm, one of the reasons why I unfortunately unleashed this movie on you is because of the description in IMDb, which just says, Adam kills a bunch of people. Right. <laughs> which I was like, even for IMDb, I'm like, oh my God. That is, that is an accurate description of this film. Now, oh, look, no. why is this dude at the hospital? Also, this game, there's no winners. I mean, I see it coming ahead. There's X and O. And, or uh, how do they say that in England? It's like the crosses and knots. Oh, knots and crosses. Right? Boy, they're different, man. So it's just called tic-tac-toe, man. That's American as get. Tick, hyphen, tack, hyphen, toe. Yeah, actually, why is it tic tac toe? There's not X's and O's and I'm sure there's like a horrible explanation. Like during the be hashtag XO. Whoa, what happened, Adam? Are you okay? Look now, at this. He came in here to kill this woman, but he, yes. he gets sidetracked and kills another woman, and then he coincidentally bumps into this woman. Oh, and he's like, oh, shit, why, why does, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to do something today. <laughs> oh, you're reminding me that I, I forgot to, oh, I was going to kill you. Now, this is not true in the real world. It doesn't make sense. She, he falls down. She thinks he's cute. So she starts probing wife, uh, girlfriend, and, right. she, you know, then she takes him home to her apartment to have sex with him. It doesn't Way make sense. Way to sense. go. Yeah. I wish all my falls were like that. Oh no, that puppet. Yup. He keeps showing up everywhere, which makes sense. The janitor with tic-tac-toes does not make sense. Look, well, it's, it's Fisher Price Castle. I oh, had I that know. when I was I a kid. That. So the only reason the puppet's here is because there happened to be a pile of toys uh, in the hallway of a hospital next to a big wet something. Yes. Okay. Now, Ooh. she is taking him home because he fell down and she said she wants to care from, from him. And then she's like, I better iron my outfit. It's all wrinkled. That's Those are man's pants. Naked. She wasn't wearing those pants. Those are like Hagar pants. Hagar. What are they called? Wait, she isn't wearing pants. She has a slip. Or, or but that's not but she was word. ironing pants. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Well, you take a man home and you'd say, why don't you make yourself comfortable? I'm going to make myself comfortable oh, and iron a pair right. of pants. You're right. That was the excuse to get him home. His pants got all messed up from the slipping on the... Right. So now she's totally trying to have sex with him. And he's not interested. She thinks... He thinks that she's the evil woman from the game trying to deceive him and he's supposed to kill her. I just thought Adam was a terrible actor and can't he respond. Is. He goes, can I have my pants back now? You know, one thing, because we watched They're Playing With Fire again, and I have to say, like, if there's no chemistry between, like, people during the sexy scenes, it makes it a more enjoyable movie because <laughs> there's like, <absolutely, laughs> people don't act this way. Now he's, she's like, this is a personal question, but are you gay? And he goes, I'm not gay, just uncomfortable. Um, and then she goes, oh, you want to play games. And she goes, I'll be the mommy and you be the good little boy. It's weird. Wow. She's got a, she had nothing to do tonight until yeah. he slipped into his life. She's clearly ovulating because she wants to go to town. She's clearly. <laughs> okay. Turn on the sound. You can hear her sex talk about being the mom. Let's pretend that I'm the mommy. And you're the good little boy. <laughs> now, this mommy will take good care of her good little boy. She'll cover him up with his big white blanket. Is this sexy? Play with him. 
No. It's it's not sexy just because I you know I had parents growing up and it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he's gonna hear the dungeon master's voice. You hear it? Yeah. I'm trying to trick me. Now look what he does. He gets no. And squirts her. That's you're like almost crazy. hot. You're crazy. You're crazy. crazy. Oh, look at that. Out of control. It burned his fingers. No, he doesn't. Oh, no. Why do you have that on your wall, lady? You know, why would she have a sickle as decoration? Oh, he or you. Okay. Now they're outside in a graveyard all of a sudden. Weird. I was going to ask you who the bell tells, but. You know, I think it tells for the D. Right. Wow. Now, listen, I love I love watching movies on YouTube. I love the passion that people upload these movies of various qualities. But this film, man, it has this weird video tinge, which yes. I'm sure is not the, the – it's just the, the shot of it. Now, look, Liberace is Liberace. Yeah. Now, it's the sound of an organ, although he's playing a piano. Isn't that the guy from the earlier scene? I don't know, Mike. You might be right. It's such bad quality. I yeah. can't see clearly. And you see the lines of the video. I think somebody is seriously is pointing their camera at a television screen. I think you're right. You know, uh, Liberace says, I wish my brother George was here to pick me up and drive me away from this set. <laughs> <laughs> so look, she, he throws the sickle and it doesn't kill him. Yeah, metal. Yeah, rock. Rock, rock yeah. Oberfest. Going to kill a nurse in a cemetery. Rock Oberfest. Diablo Sma, a dubet. And he makes like a thunderstorm. Rain. Look, Remember suddenly that? he's wearing a knight's outfit. Just poof. That makes no sense. Is that guy a priest? I can't tell from his giant collar. Yeah, he's a priest and he's saying, <laughs> damn it, I thought they predicted sunny weather. <laughs> All right, let's get this over with. He or she was well respected. Yeah. Ashes to ashes. Fuck the fuck. Dust, <clears throat> dust to dusk. Yeah, I know I said it wrong. No refunds. <laughs> There's Midget Bardot. Oh, Gidget. Oh, look, hat lady. Uh oh, here comes the, the the chase scene in the cemetery. Right. Not since Night of the Living Dead. Every filmmaker has to have a shot in the cemetery. Or so we'll now get listen it. to her. Okay. Exactly. They think it's a Rolling Stone concert. Stupid asshole. That's our movie. Well, that was fun. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. We all know Major John's. Tom's a junkie. Tom's a junkie. <laughs> <laughs> ashes to ashes. Oh, wait. Well, he did not have that sword before. Right. He didn't, and he didn't have the outfit. And she's like, oh, I guess this is me. Ooh, look, John. Fourth Ooh. Female killed with sword. It's our fourth body count. So this movie has a, a more body counts. Oh, there will be 15 dead people. Okay. Here we have our game, which nobody enjoys themselves. And he admits <laughs> that he has accomplished his goal. Go ahead, listen. Okay. Hours. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Did you have a good time doing it? Pig man. You all be paid 100,000 gold pieces now. What's wrong with you, man? Why don't you wake up? Yeah. What's this? What is this? That? That is a swatch of material I took from the sorceress's gown. Yeah, this game's not fun anymore. Yeah, it's not. No, but it was never fun. The very first time we saw them, he goes, <laughs> when they all sit down, the du the dungeon master or whatever his name is, he goes, okay, come on. Let's get this started. Yeah. Listen, fun. I got I got a real game. I got a game of Top Secret in 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. My name is Steve There's Jackson. There's the light in the tower again, inexplicably. It doesn't tie up in the end. This is the costume shop, or is this the... Yeah, we're back at the costume shop, and for some reason, this full-time nurse is also a full-time costume shop person. 
I don't oh, know why. Can I help you? I was just about to close up the costume shop. Oh, yes. Well, it won't take a second. I, I just had to come to the costume shop. Okay, well, I'm closing up the costume shop. So if you have anything you want from the costume shop. Well, yes, that's the reason why I came to the costume shop. Well, Listen, we'll I'm writing this out. movie now. Screenplay by Mike Spiegel. I, so she I am looking... is doing that. She is leaving. She goes, Adam will take care of you. It's the most ridiculous fucking thing. What kind of foot traffic does this costume shop get? <laughs> yeah, no, the thing is. But when it started out, they were doing big costume things for productions like movies and stuff. And they did the Trotterville Junior Colleges, you know, everyone's costume. But meanwhile, random people just show up and say, I got a party tonight. I want a costume. Now, there's a great costume shop in San Francisco in the lower hate. And I know when it comes to that neighborhood. I hate it. Yeah, he did. And it's called the, uh, I think it's Hate Street Costume Shop. But, you know, they have rules. You, I mean, trust me, in my t many decades living there, yes, I did go out and rent a gorilla suit there. Uh -huh. Not my friend did. Best. So, you know, there's, but there's rules. You got to show up at a certain time. You got to put down make some deposit. Yeah, make an appointment. Right. You got to sign a bunch of papers saying you're going to respect this stuff. $4 we, for insurance if you want to opt in. Otherwise, yeah. you're paying for it. There's a gorilla tax if you get a gorilla suit at the costume shop. <laughs> they say like you have to sign a piece of paper that you right. can't stand there while someone goes and this stupid idiot, and this stupid bear. Well, and it's this gorilla. Rule, rules are different. No, this is Potter Potterville Trotterville Trotters Trotel. Okay, Yell. now this woman is going to this weird ass costume party tonight for like weird ass cult people although we kind of don't know it yet and she's got an invitation is she hitting on adam like maybe uh, a plus one it's she is flirting with adam it's not really a hitting on she goes there's this woman and and she used to kill with a see see how she's like into pretending that she's killing with a hat pin yeah Adam's freaked out by it is he really i think he's getting it getting it on i don't know so he's like i'll get you accessories i'll be right back and oh here's this here's uh robert de niro from uh angel what was that angel heart why he's doing this is just a puzzle <laughs> that wasn't funny you know what carl it will make sense when all the pieces are in place but it won't you'll see a full picture now, why are we seeing her centrally getting into herself? I don't know. Yeah, me neither. Now, he shows up in a bunny costume for some reason. Why? Oh, uh, well, you see, there's something called furries, Carl. Uh-huh. Not in the Wait, what's that in his, in his paw? Oh, he's got oh, a bunny switchblade. Bunny switchblade. Oh, and the puppet watches. Although it's really not the same puppet for some weird reason this time. There's the invite to the party, and he's going to take it. I was going to say, like, she never even got to go to the party to get sacrificed at this cult. Like, she gets killed at the costume. That's right. Okay, now they're back. Okay, let's listen, because you'll hear the scenario. All he's right. going to go to this party and live out the scenario. Maybe you could prove it by bringing us some white and dark meat. <laughs> what a pig. Pig man. Pig man. Oink, oink, oink. Enough. Enough. I'm not, I want to enjoy this game. <laughs> by the apostles of hell. It's oh. like he's getting paid to be there. All right. Another shit. All right. Did I mention the apostles yet? Oh, yeah. The angel, the angelic apostles. Not the angelic apostles. The apostles of hell. Uh, they look like fucking orcs. <laughs> they, see that symbol? Yeah. That's like. That's some Nazi play, shit. Yeah, we'll see. That's that's like I don't know, devil Nazi, cult symbol. Nazi bullshit. So you turned it off, and that's fine. All we're hearing is that, like, okay. Oh, you, he, he's gonna go to the party and like have to kill all these people before they kill him 
is the scenario that's being – but they just mean playing in this game, rolling dice. Wow, December 4th, 1982. Yeah, see how it was – that's not an afterthought unless they were going to release it and filmed it after because this is 79 Toronto that they filmed it. So he goes and they – the game master in the game said that the password was skull duggery but here we are in the real world and coincidentally the password is skull duggery yeah and but the dungeon master doesn't know about this party right, right. what's the password fucking uh, skull duggery oh, oh excuse me Yes, oh, sir. Right, right away, sir. Well, right, it. You obviously are part of the cult. Oh yeah, come on in. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hey, can you do me a favor? What does skullduggery actually mean? Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, enjoy yourself at the party. Uh, we had fun. Do you Guys, like skulls? Oh, I dig them. Oh, skull. Okay. Turn up. This is Doctor Evil, and he is expecting Adam. He wants to do murder. You'll find it though. You won't be disturbed. You won't be disturbed. Hi, I came to the costume party. Where can I put on my costume? Oh, in the, the room mark wardrobe. See the okay. devil behind him? Yes. It's all tied. And the symbol. Oh, look, there's the tic-tac-toe and neon lights. Why? Oh, yeah. Um, There's a funny thing here. You got to endure a little stupid talk, and then he's going to say something funny. All and right. it might be the only funny line. Next time you see those dudes, have the sound up. Okay. Yep, they're dancing too. Why you got to be so rude? Do you think it's possible to see into the future? Of course. The present is the future to the past. To the past. This isn't the funny part, but keep it up so we don't okay. miss it. You see her areolas? The future, the yeah. Is the past. Therefore, you hear the skullduggery song? Oh my god, this is the fifth time. Present is both future and past. Uh -huh. This is like we so in deep. We're in the shallow part of the place. It's like Borges. Okay, they're going to cut away, but keep it up because we're going to get our joke now and I'll be quiet. What are they dancing to? Skullduggery. No, they're not. Listen. Could you please deflate your tits? That was it. They're not interested. <laughs> they want to be like left the alone. They're in their face, so yeah, they want to have a talk about the present and the past and finding a room together. Would they you definitely please deflate your tits. They do have an eighties look to them, like they're Trevor Horn and the Buggles. I saw you on the video the other day. Do 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 do. You know what? They do, I guess this was the 80s to come foreshadowing because it's right. 79. Well, here they're dancing warm, leatherette, right? 1979's No Wave music. Remember New York No Wave? No Wave? I don't. Wait, oh, maybe cool. I do. What? Remember we saw that cult film? Um, the they worked real hard on it. It was an Israeli director. Oh, Liquid Sky. Saucer. Yeah, I think that was part of No Wave. Yeah, it was a little No Wavy. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. Look at me. Me and my rhythm bucks. Me I and my... Yeah, wait, what was... Yeah, and you and Fonseca, you would scream that at Yeah, Fonseca and I watched that movie in the 80s, and we would just yell, aren't so, you jealous, man? So Dr. Evil goes... What is the most unlikely fantasy you do not expect would be realized tonight? And he goes, innocence. And he then the, Dr. Evil goes, this is Irene. And she's completely innocent. But meanwhile, she, you see the flashback to the apple? Right, which is the end of innocence, if I remember my Bible. But meanwhile, she goes to sleep with him, to have sex with him immediately. So that's not innocent. So I don't get it. Yeah, it all winds up having sex. They had to come up with some story to have, get it on. I don't get why he's Romeo. Why don't you just... Either. Yeah. He's got, because of his costume, I guess. Because of his uh, Yeah, I've, I've listened. As someone as a Shakespeare uh, expert, that's not Romeo. 
Ah, gotcha. He looks like a he looks like a musketeer. Oh, he beheaded her. Yeah. Well, no, he just stabbed her. Oh. Now, listen, I don't understand this movie. He is going to take off her roller skates. He's going to put them in the oven, and uh-huh. then he's going to turn the oven on. Why? 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 Oh, he even puts a chef cap on? Yes, to do the cooking of the oh, roller skates. Chew. It's so stupid. Okay, Peter. so now we've had our fifth killing, and she was stabbed with the knife, not beheaded. So did he wash his hands? I mean, like, you got to be sanitary in the kitchen. When you're working oh, wait, with no, Ted no, B. I'm sorry. This is our sixth killing. Oh, only 10 more killings to go? Yeah, yeah, nine. No, nine. Nine. Suddenly, Adam smokes. Right, and he's doing a Julia Child impression. Oh, this I tried one. Scene. This isn't our hero. We just want to see some snatch, and we get to. <laughs> snatch. Well, that's, that's what we that. did. Yeah, I know. I saw it. Oh, and I was talking to these two guys, and they told me to deflate my tits. Can you believe it? It is just banter. It's party banter. And we're just kind of seeing that they're sick people, and they're obviously part of some satanic cult because right. everyone's into gross, uh, you know, uh, Everyone gets a thrill from. Uh, oh, he's dressed as a hippie. Yeah, uh, she, he goes. He's she's describing her new boyfriend, how great he is, and really puffing him up. And then he goes, "There he is now," and it's him. It's kind of the joke, and he, he does a Chong impression, a Tommy Chong impression throughout. Oh, uh, but he, he make love not war was written on his chest, right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't wearing a t shirt. I I picked that up. Now, for some reason, a ballerina is entertaining the crowd by dancing. I don't know why. They're just looking at the fire behind them. They're very simple people. It's crackling. Oh, it's it produces heat. I can't. I must <laughs> touch it. Now, when you look at her cleavage, you see that she clearly deflated her tits. Oh, well, she must have listened. <laughs> I, <laughs> this it's is a different, different woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I thought the special effects budget went to. Oh, I'm so bored. This is boring. <laughs> it is. Uh, not even are... doing a, you know. Why can't I have sex with somebody way. wearing a mask already? Why must I sit through this? At least we're not hearing the theme song Skullduggery. Skullduggery! <laughs> Skullduggery! Skull now, this Adam's is... in a new costume. I love your singing. I do have notes. When you sing Skullduggery, can you hit the UG? Skullduggery! <laughs> now, Adam was, his name is Tom Haverstock, and he was in Terror Train in 80. And oh, wow. In this film, the only other film he is, I think you might know it, it's called Heartbreak High in 1981. I know Terror Train. Terror Train is a classic bad movie, Carl. It's the devil and God are having a debate about Uh-oh. mankind. Uh-oh. No, no. Oh, this no, might be on YouTube. If it is, look, my brother loves this movie. He was the one who showed me this film. Your brother also loves Bedazzled, by the way. He was the one who made me know that there was an original. Oh, you saw you saw the uh, Elizabeth Hurley, Brenda yes, Fraser one? Adam, you went, right. Wow, and what the, a hoot. I thought that was Bedazzled. I didn't know there was an original. Okay, so here they come in. This It's smoky. Oh, for the roller skates, not the dead body. And why? So we're going to get our Cheech and Chong guy. Oh, roller girl's not here, man. Yeah, very good. I'm roller girl. Who? You hear his Cheech, his Chong. Why? Why? They got legs. Danny and Ernie. And know how to use it. Oh, that must be, oh, they're superheroes. See, they're different flashes. Oh, um, Quicksilver. Right, Quicksilver. And... Scarlet Witch. Now, here's the ballerina. And Dr. Evil says, follow her. She will enlighten you. And she's going to try to get him to join the cult be one of our brothers or something 
it's such a perfect little world. Can you imagine your hometown has its own cult? Like, if you're a killer, that's a real up for you because you don't have to go that far. You that's don't have right. to go to West Potterville, Trotterville. Right. He thought he had to go to the big city, West right. Trotterville, to hook up with a satanic cult. <laughs> knew they were homegrown. Oh, it's not the greatest cult. It's a great. Oh, you're a little fish in a, a big fish in a little pond. But it's you're a West big pond. Trotterville has everything. It has satanic cults. It has costume shops. It has a junior college and a talent show, 10 year running. Now, this is going to be weird. You know what? I won't ruin it for you because it's coming right up. The way she gets killed, it doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't kill you. And why would it be around? Okay, never mind. You'll see in a minute. I don't know, what's that up for you? Uh oh, turn off the fondue set. Now you see a second ago, dry ice was coming out. And now it's not, but then it is again, but now it's not. You gotta be careful with dry ice. You never know. So a... This was edited by a guy named Ian McBride and shame on you, Ian. You got shame on of you, Ian. Air everywhere. Ian McShane, I should call you. Yeah, but in in defense to Ian McShane, shame, shame, you can only edit what you got. Okay, now we get another death, and I won't ruin it for you, but <laughs> it doesn't make – the death is – oh, he sees the devil. The death is inexplicable. Ready? Ready. Ready? Ready. He says the Latin phrase. What? He screams her to death. Thank God they were standing there. No, her. She's a skull now. Uh, skull fuckery. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he lured her over to where a steam pipe coincidentally. Yeah, right. Was. With a little gauge that's easy to open. It's fatal, but it's also easy to uh, open. <laughs> and then she, poof, is a skull. So now we're at our, that was seven. We've got seven people that, now Adam is in a knight's costume for some reason. Oh, good night. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're about to come up on a really awful scene in which a woman is going to get raped. And then she calls out for help. And Adam comes to help and kills them all. Kills them all. Yeah. Also, the guys who are going to rape her are dressed up in I'm gay costumes. Does that oh, make right, sense yeah. either? There they are. There they are. And Yikes. she's like, help, help. So he's just going to kill them all? Yeah, he's going to skewer them three in a row with the sword. Oh. Yeah! Or with a spear, I guess. Lucky Pierre. Maybe he's oh, they're all dead. Orange. Maybe this is a musical number. Okay, so that's three in a row. That makes 11 dead. All right. Hey, are we hit the double digits? We're the DDs? Yeah, we're in the DDs now. <laughs> they're calling Dial a Joke. Uh -huh. Very 1979. They got to hang up before the punch side because it's too expensive. Well, it was a stupid joke. It wasn't funny. It's like, what do you call a guy who can't read in two languages, a bilingual illiterate? And then they go, ah, click. <laughs> hey, it's me, Jackie the Joke Man. Jackie <laughs> the Joke Man. Dialo Jackie the Joke Man joke. A dollar nineteen a minute. <laughs> First minute is just me laughing. <laughs> First minute is free because I'm laughing. You know, I actually found a bunch of Jackie the Joke Man records on yeah. various streaming services. He has a lot of records, Carl. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got a million, million jokes. Now, one time I went and I saw him live. Me too. He opened up with a joke. Nobody laughed. Another one, nobody laughed. Another one, got a little giggle. Another one, people started laughing. So by the end of the thing, you were roaring with his roaring. stupid... You have to acclimate yourself to his act, it, he doesn't open up 
strong. Right. No. Well, you know, he does kids' albums, too, where he tells, like, not kids racist jokes? jokes. Yeah, he tells kids' jokes, and then they laugh, and they speed up his voice sometimes because <laughs> it's a yeah, kid's like... recording. Yeah. Now, the thing is, he didn't write a thing. He didn't write any of those old jokes. He just okay. has, like, a, you know, a trap in his head where he knows all these jokes. So here, Adam's got yet another victim. Wow. But Listen. he won't get killed in the end. Whoa, random balls. Oh! Damn it. Why did, next time I should wear a cup. Wow, Look my at God. The bad quality of the this bad television. Quality. Yeah, Maybe this is all film movie. noir and there's like blinds or something that produces a black and white image. No, is this the copy? We want to thank uh, Bunny Bark for, for <laughs> uploading this movie. No. For some reason, like the party in an apartment now becomes like a like a a major building. Like they were back, like they're back in that community college or something. I thought it was a mansion. The party was at. Okay, maybe that is it. Maybe it is a mansion because we're certainly. Uh oh, I don't trust the skull face. Is that Adam too? It is all well, Adam one. It is also <laughs> Adam. He's when going through here. We have a cat. It's inexplicable why. Well, according to the, the cat die dot com, the, this cat does not die. I'll let you be cat. So she got away with it. He went in there because he heard a noise. It was just the cat. Just a cat. Dun, so dun, she's dun, like dun. running for her life or something. I don't know. She's auditioning for Looney Tunes cartoon when they run now around the hallway. Now watch this, watch this. Light, light off. Smash! Well, you hear a light bulb smash sound. Somebody's clearly upstairs. Right. It. This makes no sense. We haven't been set up for it. We don't know where she is. We don't know what she's fleeing from except for Adam. Yeah, it's like watching a cartoon. How many steps down can you do? You know what I mean? She's like in the <laughs> sub, sub, sub basement. Boop, 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 boop. Does she know what she's running away from? Uh, I guess it's Adam because that's who was chasing her. But why is she all trepidatious and cautious and going slow? And I mean, wouldn't yeah. she like leave the mansion if she was? That's a good idea. So of going into the basement of the murder house, like just leave the murder house. <laughs> Look at these horrible lines. Uh, well, during the 80s, there was a lot of lines. Yeah, that was, is that a Coke reference? This yeah. is 79. Watch, something's going to fall. Ah, scream. Now, who is this guy? He is a 12th killer. And did Adam kill him? I mean, the internet wants to say yes. He killed him and then set up the prank where you open the door and instead of a bucket lands on your head, it's the guy. That's right, Mike. It's a prank, right? Like, how, well, you would have to nail his legs to the wall or something beforehand. It's a lot yes. of effort. Or tie him up with a rope. It's just like you don't have time. The party's only so long. Oh, look, there's some grape jelly on the, on the wall. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Carl, I got to get more coffee. Mike. Uh, All come right, on, man. Go ahead. When, unlike Mike, I care very much. And I went to my K Cup one and I was like, hurry up, we're on air, hurry up. Mike's like, do do do. I'm going to grind the beans. Do do do. I'm putting on my French press. Do do do. Okay, I kind of don't even know what's going on here right now. It's just. So, in my mind, at this point, this movie has derailed in terms of any sense of, plot's not even the right word. Like, why are they all in a group together going through the mansion? Uh, is he back already? I heard shuffling. All right, fine. While Mike's away, I'll just tell you some stuff about this film. Now... Thanks, Carl. 
Now, this was released at a time in which um, D&D was getting like a public backlash against it. Like it was accused of pr promoting Satanism, another form of occult activity with kids. And it's really not fair, uh, but that's what it is. And this was, um, this was a slasher film. There's something called the Satanic Panic. Have you heard of that? Yeah, we were talking about that uh, during Mazes and Monsters. I found the USA Today article that was talking about it. Right. So this was ahead of that boom, but it didn't get released till after for some reason. They filmed it first, and maybe they saw an opportunity to get it get out it there. Commercial, I guess. But I guess they're right, because they played Dungeons and & Dragons, and then he goes to a cult party, so it literally leads to a cult. And he thinks he's going through the scenario that was laid out in the game. Now Dr. Evil has highlighted him, unbeknownst to him. See, he sees the symbol, so he goes, I need volunteers. And he starts picking people with the symbols. Oh, he's going to kill them all? I guess. But he doesn't, you see. See, look at Dr. Evil. He's loving it. Like, this guy is in my power. Oh, <clears throat> there's punch. Symbol and punch. Will there be punch and pie? No, just punch. Just now, punch. here we see a cross, and then there'll be, like, like sparkles and explosions. Why is there a neon lit? Yeah. Room? Like the neon. Weird. Well, this room has a lot of weird neon. It has that tic-tac-toe. Yeah. I know. On the dance floor. Right. I have an invitation to the most fucked up party ever. Come on down. What do I have to do? I just want you to stare. Right. Try not to move when you're there. My God, great hair. This is a little mushroom. Turn up the sound so I could... Okay, he... This guy, for some yeah. reason, is going to pretend bow and arrow the cup. Unexplained why he does it. And that's it. We'll never see him again. Yeah. Wait a minute. So he shot the punch puppet and, and you see the bled. snot? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Snot came out its nose. Yeah. Then wind blows and they all are attracted to the wind. It, 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 yeah. okay. What are we looking at? I think this is the fish tank that we saw at the community college. Why? Are there Why? hands on it? Is this it, it, shot? It's the puppet. It's moment shots. Oh yeah, you're right. Now it's a dead woman who doesn't get counted in our body count for some reason. Maybe Adam didn't, maybe Eve killed her. Maybe. So oh, now there's a phone. It's the final. Yeah, he's calling the cops. He's calling the cops. Why? It's our final puzzle piece, the snake himself. The snake itself. Oh, what a surprise, Adam and Eve. I never thought you were obsessed with it. Do you have any other obsessions? Like, do you tower Babel or maybe like Abraham well, kills the son? Nah, Adam really and Eve. So here is Dr. Evil. We find out it was him all along doing the puzzle. Oh, good. Phew. But we don't understand why, like, the puzzle's now complete. Now look at this idiot. He starts taking pictures of the blanket. Right. <laughs> oh. So are the cops here or the party? Yeah, so the cops have oh, arrived they brought because their lots of dead people. We have notes. Oh, this guy. What is he doing there? See, I told you he wasn't going to win. Even this cop's like, enough with this. Right. The cop does go, that's weird. Okay, so the, 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 the junior detective goes, I found our killer. And he brings out Tommy Chong. He's got blood all over him. But he goes, that isn't blood, it's ketchup. Which is a joke I often make on this podcast. Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, no, he has a shirt that says make love. It's not his chest. Blood's not here, man. <laughs> oh, wow, man. Make lovely war. Make love. <laughs> Make love. Make louvre. Not wah. 
Make love, not works. He goes, it's ketchup. So in a very disgusting thing, the police chief tastes it. He's right, it's ketchup. He was wrong, it was blood. Black. And he goes, brilliant deduction, chief. Listen, make love, oh. not worm muffins. Now turn up the sound again. Dr. Evil I will reveal the killer. Murderer is. And how do you know? He left his business card in the dressing room. What? 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 Did he leave a matchbook of a bar that you have to go visit? Yeah, right. That's every film. Trotterville. Trotterville. All right. I'll get the phone number. This is all the cops need. Look. Look. Look, it doesn't make sense. That's not how Tic Tac Toe is played. It's wrong. Just like this film. This film knows it doesn't make sense. Now, here's another thing. They're in the costume shop. They come up with a freight elevator. So why is it that the public just comes in? Okay. Right. The, the cops learn that the killer Adam is here. That's all they need. You say it's the killer, so we're going to go arrest him like he's the killer. Then he busts in as if they already know it's some sort of like, not hostage situation, but now, what is that? It's tear gas? No, it's dry ice. <laughs> You're right. So the film is not making sense how they got here. The The dry ice doesn't make sense. <laughs> Carl, I got to admit, I haven't seen a movie this bad in a while. Yeah, except for um, Society. Oh, the film that we're never going to air? Yeah. So he shoots the gun. He goes, why are you shooting a gun? He goes, well, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> he goes, okay, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. Look, I'll look at my cop manual and it says, do not shoot if right. scared. You remember we just saw Surf 2 and he was, they were reading the book? Yeah. Go out with it, your blands up. No, it's his hands. Uh, your hands up. Horshack and Lyle Wagner. Fire. Well, Fire. One, one, they're going to get killed by Adam. In a gorilla suit? Please be uh, very He suit. will be in a knight's suit. The knight suit he was oh, in before. Gorilla is funnier. I agree. Adam, gorilla is funnier. You should have gone with gorilla. Not a comedy. Oh, yeah. You don't have to tell me twice, Carl. I think I figured that out during the first hour and 20 minutes of this movie. So yeah. we've had one cop killed. That brings us to 13. Oh, oh no. The movie's going to end soon. He only has two more people to kill. Yeah, that's right. And I'm a little suspicious about the last one because it isn't Adam who does the killing, but... Dr. But Evil? It, yeah. In the end, it, well, you'll be, you'll see. Or you could tell me. Okay. Adam's going to inexplicably vanish and then Dr. Evil will do the last killing. I don't know why. Anyway, yeah. Adam's still got one more cop to kill here. One more cop to kill. He's a cop killer. Right. That's uh, Ice, uh, Ice T wrote this song after seeing this movie. That's right. Yeah. The Ghetto Boys did Crooked Officer, which was a cop killer move, uh, song after they saw this film. Right. That explains the lyric about the costume shop. Oh my god, this is such a shitty like costume shop. Uh, oh, I'm dying. Freddie Mercury's Freddie dying. Freddie Mercury is being choked. <laughs> He's dead again. A How young times... Freddie Mercury. <laughs> He's like, Mama Mia, let me go. So I think the internet is wrong. I think we just got to our 14th killing and it wasn't counted by the internet. So maybe. Oh, that's well, so Freddie Mercury. Maybe Freddie Mercury's not dead. So he's like, I'll get this bastard. God, did you ever see the movie Bohemian Rhapsody? It was shot by Brian Singer, and then he got yeah. kicked off, and they had to get yeah. uh, uh, Dexter Fletcher in there. Who we saw one of his films. Was it? Uh, Bugsy. Bugsy Malone. Bugsy Malone. He, Malone. he was a little boy singing. Now oh, he, and he was also in Mad Monkey. Right. As an actor. 
with playing a director. Playing a director, right. Right. Okay, so now we have our, I think, 15th killing, which is a guy shot with an arrow. So he goes, I'll go get him myself. He goes, no, you might be killed. I'll go with you. And he goes, all right. Uh, uh, I need immediate backup. I'm right here. That's as immediate as it could get. Talk about now, immediate. Here is Adam in his in his suit. Uh-huh. So they go, freeze, monkey. Freeze monkey. Well, I, yeah. I made that up. Oh no. So he shoots Night. him. He goes, Why did you shoot him? I was scared. Night has fallen. Yeah, night has fought. It's sundown because night has fallen. Now it's time to take off the co the hat and reveal Adam our killer. Look! Oh devil! What the, the devil, fuck? What the hell? He's on a string. Hey, I remember that from six hundred years ago. Boo 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 boo. It's going on here. Boo 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 boo. Now, why are they pointing their guns at a dead guy? Wait a what dead guy? He's gone. He's a hollow knight. Oh, and this stupid puppet's inside of him. Yes, that's right. That's I, I'm sick of this puppet. Doesn't make any sense. I hate this puppet. Whoever gave the puppet to the director should have been spanked. Well, you ought to be spanked. It's over. We won't see it again. Now uh, here is the game again. And they're playing with a pretend Adam, like in his stead, like to om paying homage to him. Let's listen for a minute. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Man, there's other crazy stories. What's going on here? Don't forget that Adam was a warlock. A Adam warlock. So possessed. now Come the on. dungeon master's yeah. making the game in real yeah. life it's together. It's just a game. Is it? he's gone. We shall give Adam one final honor. He shall play this game with us one more time. You suck, what? DM. Now, all the what? Are on the neutral territory. I'm going to sneak into your DMs and tell you your DM sucks. <laughs> so they're going to make him roll the dice. Oh, no. An and these are not real dice. These are like flippity-flop things. Shall make an exception. What? They're dice? No. That's not dice. They're flippity flop things. They're flipped. They're like stones. They have six sides. Yeah. I guess you're right. Oh, it's nine, nine, nine. Six. Oh, nine, nine, nine. Now look, look, Dungeon Master's freaked out by six, six. Whoa! Damn! Oh, that's the last death. That's our 16th, according to me. Oh, and he took the tower with him. Whoa. Oh, I wish I never brought that puppet in. Why did I hang that puppet on the wall? Do 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 the spirit of Adam. Look at this bad TV screen, man. And there's Dr. Evil dead for some reason. With the middle finger? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That's our dungeon master stabbed. Excuse me. He's like, fuck you, film. Wait a minute. The film's saying fuck you to me. It's over. Yep. His name is Dr. Evil. You weren't fucking around. Yeah, I know. He's a sorcerer, and it, evil seems to be spelled wrong to me. But I didn't make reference to Austin Powers at all throughout this whole film. I know. I'm very proud. Oh, MC is Billy Lynn. Thanks, Bill Lynn. He was terrible. Terrible. Awful. He was, where's my Paloma girl? The ex foreign exchange student. Oh, well. Elijah Wood, Ringo Starr. Wow. Before they were famous. Uh, Bill Nye. The science uh, guy. Yeah, the science guy. Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris. Wow, a lot of people who uh, asked yeah, man. they were young. All of them were super young. Carl, what did you think of this movie? Uh, I thought this movie was terrible. Uh, when you watch it by the third or fourth time, you start to get it, and you're like, okay, this is okay. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I, I told you, I haven't seen a bad movie uh, this bad in a while. So kudos to you for being extraordinary weird. There's and, Ira uh, Cohen, your good friend from San Francisco. Oh yeah, right, Iris, Ira Summer. I, I, I call him. Who showed uh, up at the Comedy Cove doing a guest appearance? I was like, "What? Let's take what? a selfie for Spiegelman." I loved it. Yeah, San Francisco comic in New Jersey. 
Oh, yeah, there's the designer. Well, yeah, it's a weird movie. Uh, I'm glad I saw it, and uh, it sucked for sure, but for sucky films, it's pretty good. It's a good, bad movie. Uh, and may I never have to see it again. Yeah. And next time I go to the Sheraton Center in Toronto, I will spit on their carpet. <laughs> That's what they deserve. It's Trottersville. Yeah. You can't fool me. You can't fool me. Wow. All right. Well, that was exciting. We'll be back next week with a new movie. Uh, I'm Mike Spiegelman. Carl. Thank you so much for being the guest this week and also yeah, producing it, researching it, uh, doing the interview, uh, editing the show, and singing the theme song. Yes, here yes. Shortly. It was very, all in a guest day's work. Uh, my my favorite guest. We have to have you on the show again. Wonderful. Uh, Thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. What are you doing next Sunday? Oh, great. This is great. I will be here. All right. Okay. I hope you guys are here, too. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Double, double, double. Hey, hey. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. You can watch if you want to. You can slap Spiegelman's behind. L-W-A-F-L-M-N-O-Y-T on Mutiny Radio. Mutiny. Mutiny! It's pronounced mutiny. Mutiny! No, it's, it's pronounced mutiny. Mutiny! Oh, my turn-offs are guys who say mutiny. Mutiny? Well, let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Oh, Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Oh, Mike Spiegelman. Hey! Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman. Mike Spiegelman.